So the next story is about um, forges. And again, everybody had a horse long ago, long before um, uh, cars were invented, and uh, they needed the forge to keep the, the, the horses shod. So he has, he has referenced a few places and a few people in this, and it's, a, it's quite an interesting story, because it was gone from, from my me- you know, forges mm-hmm. were gone from my memory, so it's a lovely one for me to look back at. Forges in Fermanagh long ago. In our parish of Timor, Nocnini, our local smith was in the next town land to where I lived. Started in my grandfather's time by Mick Riley, named Mick the Smithy. Mick came from the borough Ahiaul. There were 28 families of Rileys in Ahiaul in those years. When Mick's father was dead, all his customers went to the wake in Ahiaul, and a story was told, and games were played at wakes in those years, and Shuffle the Bruff, the, the, now it says Shuffle the Bruff, now I don't know what it means, was played, and visitors got their ears well cuffed, which is slapped. Mick the smithy served his time with a great blacksmith called Mick Carberry. Mick's son, was, who was the blacksmith in my time, served his time with his father. And when anyone going to sell a horse, they all came to James to get the horse shod. It was like putting a new pair of shoes on a groom on the day of his wedding. If anyone asked, you did, did you see the blacksmith's pencil? You had to see the blacksmith's mark. You had to see the blacksmith mark the bar of iron with a spit on his thumb. That was thumb rule. James always let me blow the big bellows in the forge. I, I was a big man then. You had to watch James at work to blow the bellows right. You couldn't be looking round or you lost your job. The forge was thatched and paved, and the street opposite the forge door was well flagged as well. Then, as well then, the rest of the street around James's dwelling was well gravelled, and a gravel lane and road in those years. James had a brother, Johnny, who helped on a wet day, always in a rush in the forge. Johnny used to say, the call, strike the hot iron to help it turn it into shoes. Johnny could take the old shoes off horse or a donkey. That was, part, that was part of the operation. These had to be strong men to handle a kicking horse, because it was, it was dangerous or a horse could bite you. A bad kicking horse had to be tied up and tossed over to get shod. You were always told at home <clears throat> to bring home some nail stumps which were uh, knocked out of the old horseshoes or donkey shoes. We all wore tips on our shoes, <laughs> from the tips on your clogs as well, and though these half-worn nails were useful to put back on a loose tip or heel of your boot. The water was carried out of the stone trough in the forge. It was said it was full of iron to give drink to a run-down animal. The blacksmith had to cool the horseshoes after being made in the stone through in the forge. The small tool for knocking out the nails in the horse's hooves was called a pritchel, a tool made, made in the blacksmith's forge. Farmers got turf spades and spades for nicking turf on the bench if breasting the turf. It was an old McMahon spade straightened out and made sharp at the edges that would nick down four breasted turf deep. The breast spade was made flat and thin from an old spade with steel in it. Pots, pans, crows made for holding teapots, also blades of sides, turned for new handles called a sned, and and handles for sides also had irons attached. The blacksmith had to make round uh, shoeing, shoeing, I think it's called, for cartwheels. These had to be heated in the fire outside, turned and beat on red out of the big fire. Old shoeings that got loose on a cartwheel in dry weather had to be cut and heated to put on the wheel a second time. People collected old worn shoeings, to make an iron gate, still still a few of these left in the country. Travelling blacksmiths, called at all forges long ago, had to get a shilling to pass on the way, was a gentleman's agreement in olden times. A good farmer used to go to Riley's Forge on a Sunday to make an appointment to get his two horses shod the same day. This man came early in the morning riding one horse and leading a second one. It was pointed out to me one day as the man passed by, look at them breasts on the horse's hips, er, breast verses, on the horse's hips, that showing good feeding, getting plenty of linseed meal, bran and oats, getting ready for ploughing in the spring. Now, a lot of those references I don't understand. Uh, I, I would need to speak to somebody of an older generation. Uh, I'm not in the first flush of youth, but I'm still not remembering those things. So I, I, I can recognise a few of the, the sayings, so I can, you know, but um, I'd like your shot to be That's right. But it's incredible to think that... The, that the, that even the old nails that came out of the horses, uh, they were reused to make tips on on their shoes mm-hmm. and on their heels, you know, which 
it was great for dancing, yeah. but it also, uh, you know, it saved the tube being worn down. Absolutely. So nothing, as he said, nothing went to loss. Mm-hmm. You know, or that, that's a local expression, nothing, nothing went to waste. 